So some work uh, uh, that I a while ago, we attempted to look at those two different core problems within substance users and found somewhat different um, clinical correlates of uh, patients who have primarily negative affect problems. And you can see from this list that they, these are primarily uh, problems that they're having in the psychological uh, domain. In contrast to when you look at the impulsivity or disinhibition correlates, you see some of those psychological uh, correlates as well, but you also see a mixture of um, uh, psychiatric problems, substance abuse problems, other kinds of historical variables. One thing that is really common between uh, these two different core problems, as you'll see here, is that the mood disorders and the suicide attempts is present really in both of these. All of the other symptom uh, correlates are really different between the two. But those two, mood disorders and suicide attempts, tend to uh, be defining features of both of these core problems uh, that are uh, common in, in patients with borderline personality disorder and substance abuse. And so increasingly, borderline personality disorder is being thought of uh, as, as one of these disorders that sort of sits on that edge between the internalizing disorders, mood and anxiety, and the externalizing disorders, substance abuse and antisocial personality disorder. And that BPD is, uh, um, is one of the few disorders that predicts having comorbidity in both of those domains. So 75% of borderline uh, personality disorder inpatients exhibit this essentially triple comorbidity of BPD plus internalizing disorder plus externalizing disorder. Whereas when you look at uh, patients who do not have borderline personality disorder, only about 25% have this, this triple problem. And, and again, uh, BPD and substance use are most strongly related to these core uh, emotional and impulsivity symptoms as well as to childhood. So I wanted to quickly talk about just some uh, research I've been doing attempting to further subtype this group of individuals uh, that have full borderline personality disorder and substance abuse comorbidity. The first way is to look at borderline patients who also have another Axis one or personality disorder. Uh, the second way is to look at borderline patients who uh, do versus do not have a self-reported history of childhood sexual abuse who do versus do not have a current or lifetime mood disorder, and who do versus do not have a significant suicide history. So the first subtyping uh, dimension is access to comorbidity, and in work done by other individuals, uh, they found that over 90% of all borderline patients who are in treatment uh, have at least one additional access one or access two disorders. Uh, so again, you're automatically dealing with a complex patient, not just dealing with someone who has borderline personality disorder, they've got depression, anxiety, substance abuse, another personality disorder on top of that. And just uh, to kind of remind people of, of what I'm talking about with Axis with 2 here, um, Axis 2, which are the personality disorders, are divided into three clusters, cluster A, B, and C, and for the purposes of, of analysis I was doing here, I'm sort of referring to cluster A as sort of a, a psychotic subtype of those personality disorders that most resemble uh, schizophrenia. Um, and cluster B, borderline is in parentheses because I'm just looking at a subgroup of borderline personality disorder patients. So I'm looking in this subtyping method to see do they also have antisocial histrionic or narcissistic. And then cluster C, uh, which is the uh, sometimes called the anxious, fearful, or neurotic subtype. So in this sample of borderline personality disorder patients, for patients with borderline personality disorder, 35% of them also have another cluster, have a cluster A disorder, and 44% then have uh, then have another cluster B disorder, in addition, obviously, to their borderline personality disorder. However, we found no differences on a really wide range of clinical, symptom, and historical variables that we looked at when you subtype borderline patients by whether or not they have another uh, cluster B or a cluster A disorder. When we subtype them based on cluster C, which again is that anxious, fearful uh, group, not surprisingly, they have higher rates of anxiety disorders, but again, no other correlates for any of those other symptom measures. When we look at uh, the uh, 
subtyping them on the basis of childhood sexual abuse, found that 44% uh, have uh, high criteria for that. Um, and again, this is a self-report, so the rates are probably higher, but these are just what individuals told us. And the only correlate that we found for that was they also had a history of physical abuse. So again, not much uh, help there in terms of understanding uh, symptom or severity differences, at least in this sample of substance abuse. Then we look at the subtyping based on mood disorder, and we see a bit more coming out here in that uh, borderline personality disorder substance abuse patients who also have a depression, uh, a, a mood disorder, uh, have higher rates of psychiatric severity, whether that's assessed with the uh, ASI or the Addiction Severity Index or the uh, uh, Breed Symptom Inventory uh, and all those subscales that are listed there. Okay. Or, or a measure of sociopathy from the California Psychological Inventory or the severity of their addiction. Uh, that the uh, half of the BPD patients who meet criteria for mood disorder are more severe in other ways. And likewise, uh, see some somewhat, uh, different symptoms, but again, a nice uh, prediction of other kinds of historical or symptom problems in those individuals who, was 40% who have reported a history of a suicide attempt. Uh, suicide ideation is higher than that in the sample, but we really focused in on, 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 a, on a suicide attempt. So, so the summary of those uh, subtyping research uh, so far would suggest that a history of mood disorder uh, and suicide attempts may provide better differentiation of borderline personality disorder substance abusers, and this clearly has treatment implications uh, uh, and for focused intervention.